Hey folks, Linda here from Back Third Acre. It's February and it's time to start hatching quail eggs. So I have some of the more common um, speckled kind of quail eggs, but I also breed um, celadon um, layer. So the quail lay these uh, very pretty pale blue eggs. So I'm going to hatch out some quail eggs. So I'm going to show you in this video um, if you've never set, if you've never done eggs before, um, all of the steps that are required in order to hatch out your own eggs at home. So follow along and we'll go through the process step by step so that you understand what's involved and you have a successful um, incubation of your own eggs at home. If you're first getting into quail, there's two ways um, that you can explore to get eggs. So the first is preferable is to um, find a local breeder where you can um, get eggs from them. So there's a number of Facebook groups or um, other online groups around um, quail breeders, put the word out, uh, even some of the chicken breeding groups, you can put the word out saying that you're looking for, for quail eggs and you may find somebody local to your area. That's preferable just because you know they're fresher, they don't have to get um, sent through the mail and risk being damaged. If you can't find any locally, then you can uh, definitely go um, do a, an online search for some within your country, um, preferably within your own um, geographic area um, would be best. So I live in Canada and um, in BC when I first got them, I ordered them from Manitoba, so a few provinces away and had them shipped to me. Their uh, hatch rate is reduced compared to getting them uh, hand delivered. Um, but um, definitely still an option as far as a way to, to start. And if you're looking for specialty eggs, um, like celadon layers, then you may have to go to um, you know, further afield in order to get them and have them shipped to you. Eggs that are fairly clean. They don't have to be um, meticulous, but they do need to be fairly clean. And you absolutely do not want to wash them because eggs have a protective bloom over them, um, a little protective coating uh, that um, helps keep the bacteria out. So you want to make sure that that is intact. So make sure that you don't wash them, but they're not fully, you know, covered in, in uh, fecal matter either. So pick ones that are relatively clean. As you're storing your eggs, um, you also want to store them um, in a, a cool but not cold place. So I just keep them um, in my kitchen. Don't put them on top of your fridge, which generates some heat or near a heater or in a sunny window, but keep them in a, um, in a place that's easy for you to remember because you're gonna need to move them around a few times a day, um, but uh, that it's not in direct sunlight or near a heat source. So room temperature is fine, don't put them in the fridge. So when you are storing them, you're wanting to store them with a pointy end down. Um, and you can just put them into a little, um, I guess it's just a little uh, quail egg carton. So I just keep them in here and I put the eggs in uh, pointy end down. So here's a few that I've been collecting. Um, you're also gonna need to as you're collecting enough to do your incubation. So seven to 10 days is sort of the maximum period of time that um, you want to collect them prior to incubating. So if they're getting beyond um, 10 days old, then they're really going to decrease their viability for hatching. So um, collect as many as you can or you want to within that seven to day, 10 day period of time um, and then put them in into the incubator. A few times a day, you're also going to want to turn them while you're waiting to get enough eggs. So I just put mine um, against a raised surface, and here's just a cutting board as an example. So it keeps them um, tilted to one side, and then um, a couple of times a day as I walk by, I turn them around so they're tilted the other way, and um, that just keeps them from adhering to the inside of the egg. Um, prior prior to incubation so um, using a little container like this you can also use a chicken egg carton um, and do the same thing with that and just um, I have been collecting eggs from my Katornix quail and I am ready to put them into the incubator incubators 
when I first started to hatch quail eggs, and I just do it for uh, a fun hobby, so I sell a few eggs, but I'm not um, into any major production by any means. So the, I started with this one here, and this is a Trio Cottage, um, one that I purchased off of Amazon. Um, and this one did um, fairly well as far as um, hatch rates go. The only problem that I had with it is that it was really difficult to see um, inside as the um, chicks were hatching and I just find this process fascinating so I really wanted to have um, a clear view of them. So I upgraded to the Brinzi um, Mini 2 Eco and that one um, allows a really nice clear uh, viewing of the chicks as they're hatching so I much prefer this one and this one is a higher quality um, incubator um, but it's the lowest model um, for number of eggs and it has a manual turner on it as well there's nothing automated about it so pretty basic but I really like that you can see those chicks hatching um, so some incubators that you might um, pick up have these little trays um, in here and you put the eggs in um, into um, each of these little slots. These you can pick out and move around depending on the size of your egg. So if you're doing chicken eggs you can put chicken eggs in here um, and then reduce the size for the quail eggs. So it clips onto a little mechanism here that gradually just um, slides this little tray back and forth uh, very slowly um, turning the eggs because they'll need to turn during the incubation process. Um, so the Brinzi is different in that it has these wheels. This is the one that came with it for chicken eggs and then there's one in here for um, quail eggs. So the eggs get um, set on here um, into and there's a little uh, piece of corrugated cardboard underneath um, that helps with some traction. So you just set the eggs in here and then as you're turning the dial um, it rolls the eggs. You can also um, incubate the eggs just straight up on the cardboard without the turner and then you'd have to manually um, open it up every day and turn the eggs and I've done both ways and eat, eat each option is um, equally as successful. So I'm going to set this, um, the Brindy, um, up to hatch our first um, batch of eggs. And I'm choosing to use this one um, because I like to watch them hatch, but I also have young grandchildren um, who also like to watch them hatch. So um, I'm going to be setting this one up and follow me along. The first thing that you want to do when you're setting up and getting ready to incubate your eggs is to warm up your incubator first. So you want to make sure that it's in good operational condition before you add your eggs in. So um, I'm just going to, to put it back together and plug it in and let it run for a few hours um, to make sure that it is up to the, up to the right temperature. Um, in, I am on the west coast of Canada, so we have a very humid environment, so we're in February right now, but our humidity level um, outdoors is around 75%. So. Um, I do a method called a dry hatch. That means that I am not adding additional water in um, to the water reservoir. So here it's this little um, hole right here where I would be putting water in. Um, I don't do that for the first 15 days of the hatch. Uh, so I do a dry hatch method and I have found far more success with that method um, than, than trying to keep the humidity levels um, under control. I found that very, very difficult here because of our high humidity in our environment. So if you're hatching quail, um, you'll check out what the humidity level is in your environment and definitely consider doing a dry hatch um, for them. You're going to raise your humidity level on day 15, but we'll get to that as we, we go through this process. So I'm going to plug in the incubator and start to get it warm. Some people like to add an additional um, thermometer, uh, digital one, into their incubator. Um, especially as you're first starting to um, just feel reassured that your temperature is accurate. The incubator is all warmed up, 37.5 degrees Celsius, and it's time to add in the eggs. 
I'm using the corrugated cardboard rather than the inserts because I have more than 12 eggs that are going in. And then I will rotate um, the eggs multiple times a day uh, by hand. It's important to take note of what day you're starting to incubate your eggs. So today is February 2nd, so I'm making sure that I write that down. 15 days from now will be the date that they go into lockdown, and February 20th will be their hatch date. Definitely um, make note of that so that you anticipate when you have to have your brooder set up. Because I am rotating the eggs by hand rather than an automatic turner, I'm going to mark the side, one side of the egg with a wax crayon um, with an X so that I know um, what position the eggs are in as I rotate them throughout the day. So on day five, you can start to candle your eggs to check for um, for development. So if you have the speckled kind of eggs like these ones, they're much more difficult to see through. Um, so you you can give it a try, but it's um, going to be more difficult at this stage to uh, at this early stage um, to to see any uh, veining in the egg because of the black um, or the dark splotches that are on the outside of the egg. However, if you are hatching um, celadon eggs, um, you're quite quite easily able to see the veining that's starting to develop inside of the egg. So you're going to want to go into a dark room. So I do it in in the um, evening time, and and I go into a dark room, and I just use a regular flashlight. You can also get commercial, you know, ca um, candlers they're called, and they are just a um, highly focused light. Some people have also used their the light on their um, cell phone. So find a method that's the best for you. So I find that just using a, uh, a fairly high powered little flashlight works well. So um, recording in the dark doesn't work so well so I'm going to show you how I do it and then some images that I've gotten um, from, from doing it in a dark room. So I just uh, obviously turn the flashlight on and then I'm going to bring my hand up and sort of cup it around because that's where I'm going to place the egg. So you're going to place that into that um, space between your thumb and your forefinger and you're going to um, put it in with the chubby side of the egg downward so you're going to be able to look and identify that um, air sac that's in there. So when you do that it sort of seals as much of the light um, and focuses it into the egg so that you'll be able so to to see the veining. If you have an egg that is um, not developing like this one, notice that it almost glows. So there's no vein development. You can see where the yolk is in there, but the, the egg has quite a glow to it compared to this one. where you can s clearly see the vein development starting um, um, for, for the chick in there. So you know that that one is, um, is a viable egg. You can choose to leave, leave the, um, the glowing ones in for, for a few more days to see if anything um, happens. It's just a slower starter. It's unlikely and you can just remove those um, uh, from the incubator um, at that point. You can also candle um, all along. You don't want to candle every day, but um, you can definitely candle again um, just prior to lockdown. And if you have any eggs that are, um, are not viable and are, are kind of glowing, then you definitely want to remove those before you go into lockdown. Um, and any egg that is, is smelling bad, you can just pick them up and give them a smell and you will um, quickly be able to identify if it's um, going rotten inside. And you definitely want to remove those with a bag over your hand <laughs> um, and grab it and put it into the bag and dispose of it. Um, because exploding rotten eggs in your incubator um, will contaminate it and infect the other ch the chicks as they're hatching, but also um, it really smells very, very bad.